party people i'm so glad you're joining us today i'm taylor and i'm callie and if you are ready to get this party started i need you on your feet and ready to worship god with some singing and dancing let's do this everyone there are a couple of ways that we worship or show God love and praise we worship God through singing but we also worship God with our giving the Bible teaches us that we give first we save second and we live on the rest that's right God has been so generous to us that we can be generous with everything we have the money that you give during offering is used to help people near and far meet know and follow Jesus if you are here with us now you can bring your offering up during this next song if you are joining us on Online, we have lots of ways for you to get involved in offering. You and your parents can learn more at give.sv.cc. But for now, let's sing this last song. There's a Holy Ghost party that never stops 
job, everyone. You can go ahead and take a seat. This month, we are talking about self-control, which is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. It's not always easy to choose self-control, but with God's help, it's something we all can learn to do. Sometimes our emotions can get the best of us, like when your sister decides to take your shirt without asking for it again, and she tries to play it cool by returning it, but then there's a stain on it that you know wasn't there before, and she says she didn't do it, but you know she did! Yeah, whoa, whoa, and, whoa, Callie, 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 Callie. I think we are getting pretty upset about this, and I think you're kind of losing your, your control. So, I think we have a video that is perfect for us to watch about self-control, and I think it might help you, but I also think it might it help better. somebody else that's struggling with self-control. So, let's check it out now. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Jacob, here today to talk to you about self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what you should, even when you don't want to. It's very important to have control. I have a controller for just about everything, in fact. Like this stereo. <laughs> Thanks, stereo. Or this fan. Oh. I've even got a remote for my blender. And of course, everyone's favorite remote control, the TV remote. Whoa. Where is the TV remote? That's, this is its spot. This is its home, it's where it lives. Where are you, little TV remote? TV remote! TV? 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 No, little guy, where are you? TV! This makes me so mad. <laughs> I just, I, uh, I bought the remote caddy so that I could house my remotes. And when someone takes the remotes away and doesn't put it back, I get real angry. I ask you, why have a remote caddy! If you're not gonna caddy, the remote! What's going on? Oh, I think I heard paused. Okay, maybe this is for the best. I was really losing my temper there. Okay, I feel better. You can unpause me now. Oh. 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 That was a close one. Anger can really take over if you let it. In today's story, we'll hear about a guy named David who had every reason to be angry. Let's hope it doesn't control him. Oh. I wonder what this controls. I don't even own a car. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 24. David had been chosen by God as Israel's next king. But for a while, Saul was still king. David served King Saul and won many battles for him. The people loved David. Hey, David, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow up my day, David! Hey. Saul, however, was deeply jealous of David. In fact, he even tried to kill him. David escaped into the wilderness, where around 400 men came to join him. People who were in trouble or owed money. A merry band of misfits. But Saul still saw David as a threat. When he heard that David and his men were camped in the desert of Maon, 
Salt took soldiers to chase after. They're right behind us, David. Quick, we'll head around the mountain. Just as Saul and his men were closing in on David, Saul received word that the Philistines were attacking Israel. Oh, phooey. Saul was forced to stop the chase and deal with the Philistines. David and his men could breathe a sigh of relief. There's a safe place near En Gedi. Maybe Saul will finally leave us alone if we hide out there. But as soon as Saul had dealt with the Philistines, a messenger brought news. David is in the desert of En Gedi. Aha! We've got him this time. Gather 3,000 of the best soldiers from all of Israel. But, Your Majesty, David only has 400 men. 3,000, and not one less. Saul set out once more, determined to wipe out his rival. I uh, bet that pipsqueak is hiding out near the rocky cliffs of the wild goats. Well, that seems oddly specific. Yeah, he used to herd sheep. In fact, David and his men have been staying near some sheep pens not far from the cliffs. Saul, so, headed this way. He's got 3,000 soldiers. Again? Why can't he leave us alone? We can take him on. I'm worth 10 of his soldiers. David could feel his anger boiling, but he took a deep breath. No, we won't fight them now. And uh, we won't have a choice in about six minutes. The caves, I, I want everyone inside, stat! David and his men heard into a nearby cave that cut deep inside the cliffs. All the way to the back. They're here. Outside near the sheep pens, Saul had called a halt. Take a break, men. At that moment, Saul found himself in need of a royal outhouse. Well, I require a, a royal outhouse. <clears throat> I believe there's a cave over there, your majesty. Uh, I suppose it'll do. Saul entered the cave. Far back in the cave, David and his men froze. Through the gloom, David could see the man who had tried to kill him and was now forcing him to live on the run. What if he finds us? I don't believe we're Saul's number one priority at the moment. He's alone. This is your chance. God's handed your enemy over. Don't let this chance just trickle away. David's anger burned red hot as he crept up behind Saul, sword at the ready. But then, he forced himself to stop. Instead of attacking Saul, David sliced off a corner off the king's long royal robe. Saul left the cave with no idea that David was still inside. Time to move out, men. This is the day we take out that whippersnapper David. But at that moment, David emerged from the cave and cried out, the King Saul! David? David bowed low to the ground. Why do you listen when men say David is trying to harm you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord handed you over to me in the cave. Some of my men begged me to kill you, but I didn't. I said, he is the Lord's anointed king. Saul could only stare in shock as David held the piece of fabric he cut from Saul's robe. Look at this! I cut off the corner of your robe, but I did not kill you! Yet you are hunting me down to kill me! May the Lord show that I'm not guilty of doing anything wrong. May he save me from you. The truth cut Saul to the heart and began to weep. Oh, you are a better person than I am. You have treated me well, but I've treated you badly. May the Lord reward you. I know for sure that you will be king. Now, promise me that you won't kill my family or, or wipe out my name from my family line. David looked his enemy straight in the eye. I promise. Then Saul and his men returned home, and David and his band of misfits returned to their usual hiding place.
David was angry at King Saul, and he probably should have been. King Saul was trying to kill David. But even in his anger, David didn't lose control. He paused and thought and didn't let his anger take over. You don't need a remote control for yourself to know how to pause. You can do that on your own. If you're angry because someone borrowed something they weren't supposed to, or someone said something that really hurt your feelings, you could just fly off the handle. <laughs> or you can pause, count to three, or 10, or 100 if you have to, and think about how you're going to respond. Remember, you can pause in real life, but what you can't do is rewind. Once you've said or done something in anger, it's out there. You can never take it back. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever get angry. In fact, Jesus himself got angry, but he had good reasons to get angry. And so do we sometimes. It's like when you or someone you know is being treated unfairly, that's a good reason to get angry. Losing a remote, probably not the best reason to get angry, but good anger or bad, it's still wise to keep control of your anger instead of letting it control you. That's the one thing to remember today. Don't be controlled by your anger. Count to 10 and keep your cool. Music! I gotta get a universal remote. I'll see you next time. What a story. Imagine what that moment must have been like for David when he had the chance to get back at King Saul the one who chased him and made him run for his life. Even David's men told him that he should take the chance to attack. But even though David was angry at King Saul, he didn't let his anger take over. He made a choice that we can make too. He stayed in control so that no one would get hurt. Remember, don't be controlled by your anger. The truth is, there will be times that you and I feel angry, and anger isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, Jesus himself got angry from time to time, but Jesus had good reasons to get angry, and so do we. Like when you or someone you know is treated unfairly. The important thing is knowing what to do when you feel angry. You can learn how to calm down so that you don't say or do something that makes the problem worse. So the next time you start to get mad, hit pause. Think for a second and ask yourself, what's the wise way to respond? If I want to make the wise choice, what should I do next? Remember, you can't rewind the things that you've done or said. You can't take them back. So let's control our anger instead of letting it control us. God will always be there to help us. That's what this month's memory verse is all about. It says, God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life, 2 Peter 1.3. Let's take some time to pray and thank God for this. God, thank you so much for the story of David. We got to see the example of how he chose to control his anger, even when King Saul was running after him. It may have been easy to get angry and lash out, but David made the wise choice. And I pray that we too can make the wise choice and have self-control. God, thank you so much for loving us. We love you and we trust you. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at SVKids and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sun Valley Kids. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.
Dear God, Dad always says we can learn things the easy way or the hard way. But today, well, it sure wasn't easy, but I think it will get easier next time. It started at breakfast, when Dad said he had to go do some errands with Aunt Lisa. He said her family has been going through a tough time, and she needed him to help today. So he needed me to pitch in too. My little cousin Sam needed a place to hang out for a few hours. And all I could think about was that every time he came over, he broke stuff and took my things, and he never listens. Dad said, I really need you to control your temper and make sure he has a good time. I knew he was serious, so I told him I'd try. So when Sam got there and the first thing he did was spill his drink, I had to remind myself to try and be cool. Then when he didn't listen, when I told him not to feed the fish too much, ugh, I almost lost it. But at least he helped me try and clean it up. Sort of. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with him. I thought it would be good if we tried to play some Brick Busters. And that worked for a while, but he broke the controller. He broke my controller. How do you even? Oh, I almost lost it again. God, if I hadn't taken a breath and remembered Proverbs, <laughs> I think I would have really messed up. So Sam and I drew some treasure maps and made up stories about them. It worked for him and it worked for me. God, thank you so much for helping me think of that. I think it saved the day. Aunt Lisa looked tired, but she gave me the biggest hug. So did Sam. And he asked his mom if he could come over and play with me again. God, thank you for teaching me about self-control. Sincerely, Zach.